All right. Um, while people send uh, their warm up in, cop, uh, copy the home play for tonight. It's only 10 problems. Only 10. Uh, home play, it says graph, and it's 10 problems. Copy those. And copy those. All right. Yes, tutoring today. Okay, y'all ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Well, you're finishing uh, seeing that in. Our objective for today, I can master graphing rational functions. I can master graphing rational functions. Now, uh, yesterday and uh, we actually started with radical, but we need an extra day of practice since I saw a couple of things that we need to practice on and going back and forth with the converse of writing radicals from fractional exponents and vice versa. Therefore, uh, with the home play that you saw today, those 10 problems, tomorrow being Friday, you are to perform those 10 by yourself. But today I'm going to go over exactly the 10 that are, I always go over the study guide. Let's see. And uh, so, study, do your home play, don't copy from people. All right, no, no, I'm kidding. in general. Okay, title your paper, uh, Rational Functions Review. Rational Functions Review, number one. Here we go. Number one. Be nice. It says, identify the asymptotes. G of x equals 1 over x minus 8 minus 10. What? Okay. You want to give me money or what? Okay. All right, here we go. It reads. Oh, my goodness. Give me a second. Let me move this out of the way. There it is. All right. So, add some toast. Vertical asymptote, x equals horizontal asymptote, is y equals. So if you look at this rational function, look at the denominator, this looks like, bless you, it looks like, bless you, like the general rule for transformation. It already has the x, it has a minus, so therefore the vertical is 8 because the negative is part of the form. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. And of course, the constant will be our horizontal asymptote. So that's negative 10. However, look up. If this was a positive, tell your neighbor what the vertical asymptote would be. Exactly, it would be negative 8. Why, Mr. Q? Because if this was a positive, it would look like this. x plus 8 equal to 0 minus 8 minus 8. So therefore, x equals negative 8 if that was a positive. But since it's not, then we won't do that. Okay? All right. Next, what if, look up, it had a 2 as a coefficient on the x. Tell you never what you would do. It had a 2. Yeah. Yeah, you can either factor out the GCF and then you can see the actual vertical asymptote or set it equal to zero and solve for X. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Copy this next one, please. Example number two. Identify the asymptotes. They give you G of X equals one over five X minus 20 and then minus two. See if you can do that by yourself. 
Copy and go. All right, as you're sending it in, here we go. Some of you did this. Vertical asymptote. X equals, check this out. There's two ways of doing this. The first way you can do GCF, which is 5. And we're left with X minus 4 just by looking at it. Then the vertical asymptote is 4. The second way of doing this is setting it equal to 0 and solving for X. Mm -hmm. Plus 20 plus 20. 5x equals 20 divided by 5. x equals 4. Either way will work. Horizontal asymptote would be the easy one because you can actually see the constant here, which is negative 2. Now, for tomorrow, on the previous problem, this one doesn't require any work. Do you agree with that? Okay. Does this one require work? Yes, either this or that, and then show me the answer. Not that I'm saying, look, now let me tell you why. Because each problem is worth two points, one for the work and one for the correct answer. Not that I don't trust you guys that you guys aren't geniuses and you can do that in your head and just give me answers. But what if another class, I have someone that's only copying the answers from someone? All right. Number three. Copy this one. Here goes the Flutter stuff. It says, graph the function. G of x equals 1 over x minus 5 plus 3. All right. So let's see. What do we need to graph? Well, we need our asymptotes. So what is our vertical asymptote? Tell your neighbor, please. X equals? 5 is correct. And horizontal asymptote is Y equals? 3. All right. Get a coordinate plane going here on the side. And I'm going to only give you one paper tomorrow, and you need to do all the work there. And I don't want to hear, Mr. you can you get a scratch paper? No, scratch the desk. And do the work on the paper. All right, here we go. 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right there. And Y3, 1, 2, 3, which is right there. That's our horizontal. Okay. Now, by looking at it, this is a regular rational function. That means my function is right here and right here. Hmm. Now, just, just in case, let's say I gave you the same function, which would be the same asymptote except for a negative in the front. Tell you never what it would do to the entire function. Reflect about the horizontal asymptote. So it would be right there and right there. Yep. We good? All right. Number four. Copy that one. Number four reads, graph the function g of x equals 1 over parentheses x minus 3 close parentheses to the second power plus 2. Vertical asymptotes, x equals, by looking at it, what's inside of the parentheses x minus 3. So we already have an x, we already have, have a minus. So now what is our vertical asymptote? 3. Horizontal asymptote, y equals 2. Let's graph it.
All right, we got, is that crooked? It's a little crooked. There it is. X equals 3. 1, 2, 3. And y2, 1, 2. Now, before you graph, look up. Who noticed that this has a squared on the denominator? Yeah, so the graph is going to change. It's here and here. All right. Well, what if I gave you something like this with a negative? Tell you never what it does to the function. That is correct. It reflects about the horizontal asymptote. Mm -hmm. What number was this? Four. Four. Therefore, let's go to five. Copy this one. All right, it reads. Number five, graph the function g of x equals 1 over x squared minus 100 minus 5. Now, I hope you notice this one is different from the one we just did. This one has a factor in a parentheses with a second power. This one does not. Therefore, vertical asymptotes, x equals, we cannot just get it from there because there's a squared on the x. How do we get rid of the squared on the x? We do x squared minus 100 equal to 0. That's all. Plus 100. x squared equals 100. Square root, square root. x equals plus minus 10. So we have two asymptotes now, verticals. 10 and negative 10. How about our horizontal? Do we still have a constant? Yeah, y equals negative 5. There it is. All right, let's graph this. Chasing waterfalls. Should have been a singer, right? I Leo, man, you I still can. All right, let's go negative 10. Your vertical asymptote. Positive 10. And our horizontal asymptote is y negative 5, which is about right there. Here's 10, here's negative 5. Okay, you're like, oh, snap, Mr. Q, this looks a little bit different. Okay, but the main concept is still there. Once again, isn't this a quadratic? That means we have 1 on this side. But now it, they got split up because of the two verticals. So therefore, I do the other one right there. Let's see if that rings a bell. What happens with this empty space? In upside down parabola, that is correct. Too easy. Not even too easy or easy, it's tweezy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> number six. Is that number six? Have you heard all right over there? Good? Good. Example number six. Rewrite the function and graph. G of x equals 5x plus 3 over x plus 4. All right. 
What do you guys notice? It doesn't look like the other ones. But what do we need on the numerator? We need a 1. So whenever we get to these, the first thing that you need to check, though, is it has factors. Can we factor the numerator? No, other than 1, no. How about the denominator? No. So if we cannot do that, and we don't have a 1, we have polynomials, we do long division. 5x plus 3 divided by x plus 4. What number times x gives me 5x? 5. five. That's 5x five plus 20. Now look. Look up, please. Please do this step. Look up. You draw your line. You label minus. And with a different color, please, if some of you that are making common mistakes, distribute the negative to this one and to that one. Because some of you are going a little bit faster. And when you sit down and do a lot of different concepts at once, sometimes your noodle gets tired and you're, you're going to forget one of those. FYI, BTW. So here we go. This cancels. We're left with negative 20 plus 3. That's negative 17. Now, we can uh, write our mixed number. So what is our whole number? 5 plus, what's our remainder? Negative 17. And the denominator is x plus 4. However, we always leave the constant at the end, right? What allows us to move it around? Commutative property, yes? So I'm going to bring this term to the front, this one to the back, so it's negative 17 over I don't want no there it is. We're not done. Why? So you remember why we're not done up to right there. The negative 17. There needs to be a 1 there. So what is negative 17 times? Oh, times 1. So we can leave the 1 there. So therefore we move the 17, negative 17 there times x plus 4 on the denominator plus 5. And here a1, and now we have g of x equals to that. Now we have a rational function. Can we graph this? So what do we need? We need our r, v, a, which is, tell your neighbor, x equals negative 4, and our h, a, which is y equals 5. All right. Yeah. Oh, yes. All right, here we go. Uh, x to the negative four. One, two, three, four. This is our vertical. Y5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Can't you see? Now, before I graph it, I'm going to do an air graph. Oh, get it? Like Air Jordan? Damn. Anyway, here we go. If I do the air graph right here, it would go here and here. Is that correct? But why am I not graphing it? Tell your neighbor why am I not graphing it. Because it's a negative. So it would go down here and right there. Now, a question came up earlier, Mr. Q. Since the 17 is going to stretch it, do we stretch it? Am I going to ask you to build me an input applicator with no. points? No, oh, that's going to take too long. I just want to make sure that you know where the asymptotes are and how to sketch your uh, function. What's that? You're going to graph this. But I'm saying I'm not going to ask you to do specific points. Okay? All right, let's go to the next one. Number 
This one you do by yourself. So I'm going to send you the screen, and I want you to send me what you got as soon as you have it. Uh, number, what is this? Seven. seven. Number seven. Rewrite the function in graph. G of x equals negative 5x plus 2 over x minus 4. Copy that and send it in as soon as you have it. Correct answer on your screen. Check your work. And if you got that, okay, good. Now remember, show the negative, distribute, and do the computation, or else you're going to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. Number eight. Number eight should be on your screen. Number eight reads, rewrite the function and graph g of x equals x squared plus 9x plus 8 over x minus 2. Now, someone said right now I heard long division. However, before that, we need to check one thing. Can we factor it? All right, let's see. 8, 9, factors of 8. That add up to 9. 1 and 8. So my factors are x plus 1, x plus 8, and my denominator is x minus 2. Some of you are like, some of you are like, wait a minute, Mr. Q. There is no giant 1, and I can't do anything else with that. Okay, so look up. I'm going to put a little note for myself. Asterisk, hard, huh? No giant one, comma, no whole. You guys agree with that? If it does have a giant one, then what? We use that to find our whole. That will give us the x value, and then from there we substitute it to the function. So, since we don't have a giant one, then we go to the original one, and now we do long division. Okay, here we go. So, let me zoom in. We got x squared plus 9x plus 8 divided by x minus 2. That's x. x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Subtract. I'm going to distribute that negative. This is a negative. This turns into a positive. So this is 11x. Bring down the next term, 8. So therefore, from there, what number times x gives us 11? So that's positive 11. That's 11x. And negative 22. Now check this out. I'm going to subtract minus plus. This is 30. Now look what I'm going to do. Look up. Look up, look up. Now that I did my long division, only with these, I no longer need any of this. What do I need then, Mr. Q? Just the quotient. Because that's my slant asymptote. Y equals what? X plus 11. What's that? That's the oblique asymptote, or slant. But we still need our vertical asymptote, don't we? Tell your neighbor what the vertical asymptote is. Two, that is correct, because it's right here. All right, let's graph. Let me zoom out. What's that? Uh, it doesn't have a horizontal. It became a, a, a slant. All right, here we go. So the question was, the horizontal is zero, Mr. Q? Well, the horizontal, we don't, we don't use it. We're going to use a slant. So we start at what? Positive 11 of y, which is up here. Positive 11. What is my slope? 1 over 1. That means 1 up, 1 to the right, 
one up, one to the right, one up, one to the right, one up, one to the right, one down, one to the left, one down, one to the left, one down, one to the left, and so on and so forth. And what's our vertical? Two, one, two, it's right there, vertical. So my graph is right here and right there. Is it coming back there? Okay. Go to number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Here we go. It reads, number nine, rewrite the function in graph. g of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 16 over x plus 4. What do we check first? 16 and 8. Factors of 16 that add up to 8. 4 and 4. Therefore, g of x equals x plus 4, x plus 4 over x plus 4. What do you notice? A giant 1. What does that mean? That now we have a whole. What do we do with one of those factors? We do x plus 4 equal to 0. I'm using one of these. Yes? Minus 4 minus 4, x equals negative 4. That's part of the whole. I rewrite whatever's left of my function. g of x equals x plus 4. Now, sometimes we're going to get a rational or something else. Right now, this is a linear function. Do you guys see this? Okay. But can we find the y value of our whole? We got the x value be negative 4. How do we find our y value? We get this and substitute it in for x. So we get negative 4 plus 4, and that is 0. That is correct. All right, let's graph. There you go. Uh, negative 4, 0 is our whole. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, which is right there. And now I'm going to graph my function. We start at what? 4 of y, 1, 2, 3, 4, at your point. And my slope is 1 up, 1 to the right, 1 up, 1 to the right, 1 up, 1 to the right, 1 up, 1 to the right. Or 1 down, 1 to the left, 1 down, 1 to the left, 1 down, 1 to the left, 1 down and 1 to the Wait a minute, I can't plot it there because there's a hole. So I go another down, 1 to the left. One down, one to the left, one down, one to the left. So what does that look like? Like so. The linear function, but with a hole. Do you guys see the whole thing? Nice. All right. So once again, factor, giant 1, start with uh, setting one of those factors equal to 0, find the whole, and graph. Go to the next one. Last one, number 10. Rewrite the function and graph. g of x equals x plus 4 over x squared plus 6x plus 8. Start with the denominator. Can we find factors of denominators? Yes. Yeah. Factors of 8, that add up to 6, everyone. 2n, 4. So on the denominator, I have x plus 2 and x plus 4. What's in the numerator? What, but what's the GCF? 1. And we're left with x plus 4. So we write g of x equal to that. So we have a giant 1. Yes. So therefore, we write x plus 4 equal to 0. 
minus 4 minus 4, x equals negative 4. That's part of my whole. What's left? Kenzie, read me the leftover function. G of x what? 1, one over x plus 2. Look at this leftover one. It's a rational function, a regular one, yeah? All right, but we still can't graph it until we find the whole and the asymptotes, yes? All right, so we get negative 4 for x. How do we find our y value? Substitute in there. So we get 1 over, instead of x, I'm going to write negative 4 plus 2. What is negative 4 plus 2? Negative 2. So my y value is negative 1 half. All right, now all we need is our asymptotes. The vertical asymptote is x equals negative 2. Horizontal asymptote, does it have a constant here? No, so it's y equals 0. All right, let's graph. All right, so we get, uh, let's start plotting the whole first. Negative 4 and negative 1 half. Negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 1 is here, so negative 1 half is about right there. Okay, there's a hole. What are my asymptotes? Vertical at negative 2, which is here. And the y equals 0 is right there, so it go. it's on the actual x-axis. There it is. And if it's a regular rational, so watch. It's going to get to the hole, but not go through it. And there it is. However, let me zoom in so you guys can see the graph. Here's my vertical asymptote. How many steps is the hole away from it? One, two, and half down. So there must be a point two to the right and half up. And that's how we reflect the other side of the function. Huh? That was just one? Half step up, yeah. All right, guys. Hopefully for tonight. Uh, home, yes. Ten problems. Make sure you study. Enjoy your home play. Make it a family math night. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.